It's now my great pleasure to introduce Brenda J. Child. She'll be the moderator of our next panel, Bad Acts, Bad Paper. And Brenda was born on the Red Lake Ojibwe Reservation in northern Minnesota, where she's a citizen. And she's professor of American Studies at the University of Minnesota. She is an author, was an exhibition advisor for Remembering Our Indian School Days at the Heard Museum in Phoenix, Arizona, and she is a trustee of the National Museum of the American Indian. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you so much, and welcome to our session, uh, Bad Acts, Bad Paper. I know that the new exhibit on treaties that we recognize with this symposium was timed to coincide with many anniversaries taking place in Indian country. In the case of my own tribal nation, the Red Lake Ojibwe, it was 150 years ago, just this past October, that our leaders negotiated the Old Crossing Treaty, during the course of which we lost 11 million acres of land to the United States. That was in western Minnesota, and as you can imagine, it was prime agricultural land full of natural stands of wild rice and game. I often reflect, especially during the past year, on what our leaders faced in 1863, even as they struggled for their livelihoods, less free than they had ever been before, and living within the constraints of a new settler society. When I look at and read the transcripts and the speeches from those negotiations, evidence suggests they were thinking about us, their descendants, and were holding on to the idea that in 150 years, there would still be a homeland for Ojibwe people in northern Minnesota, and there is. So despite the bad acts and bad paper involved in this history, we must always remember that very important fact. So I'm very pleased to be able to be here today to introduce a very, very distinguished panel. Two of them are fellow historians, another a law professor, and a tribal chairman. They'll each speak to us for about 15 minutes, and then we'll have time for questions from the audience. I'm going to introduce them briefly and uh, kind of dispense with the tradition we have at universities of extraordinarily long introductions. <laughs> it's hard for me, but um, because each of them are deserving of very long introductions. They're very distinguished folks. First, Mark Macaro, who is the tribal chairman of the Pechanga Band of Luiseno Indians, a position he has now held for 19 years. Mark is on the board of the Native American Rights Fund and the Harvard Project on American Indian Economic Development. He has a very impressive resume of projects, work, and engagement with his community uh, and with the whole uh, Pacific region in California. Jennifer Nez Dinetdale is a historian and professor of American Studies at the University of New Mexico. You can find her essay on Navajo history and the Treaty of 1868 in the new book, Nation to Nation. Jennifer is also the author of Reclaiming Diné History, the Legacies of Navajo Chief Manuelito and Juanita. James Writingen is a professor of American Indian Studies at Arizona State University. He has been, for many years, the editor of a significant journal in our field, the Wichazo Shah Review, and he is an expert on issues involving repatriation. And James also has an essay in the new book, Nation to Nation, about Pawnee treaties and diplomacy. And we will also hear from Lindsay Robertson, who's a prof law professor at the University of Oklahoma. He has an excellent essay in Nation to Nation that sheds new light on the history of a significant case, Johnson v. McIntosh, which has had a case which has had a tremendous impact on the development of US and Canadian law about tribes and First Nations. <laughs> 